Hey guys, so I just want to do a comparison here between uh, the camera performance on the XC Premium and the Galaxy S8. I know I did a comparison with the XCS, uh, which is like the same kind of phone in terms of the camera 90 megapixel uh, with one uh, gigabyte of DRAM for the super slow motion technology. Well, I wanted to see how the best of Sony did compare here. Uh, so we have uh, made some, you know, uh, daytime shots, and you can see the results here on, uh, you know, some of these pictures. And I've got to say, it's a very similar story, I'd say, to the XES, you know, in terms of the good light. So the actual performance is very comparable. Maybe Sony is focusing more on the, uh, you know, realistic kind of shots, uh, whereas on the Samsung you get more of a vibrant kind of shot. Uh, I think uh, Samsung's kind of linked the HDR a little bit better here. This is actually a HDR shot, and you can see things are a little bit brighter overall. Uh, but in terms of like uh, you know the daytime shooting, uh, it's very uh, open to interpretation what you prefer from you know your shots really. So uh, I think uh, it's a very comparable performance. Uh, obviously, the main difference usually is in terms of the low light or the like uh, you know indoors kind of shots. I think it's quite a similar story here as the XCS. You got a very good performance overall with the 19 megapixel sensor, considering it doesn't have optical image stabilization. I think it has slightly bigger pixels than the old XC, uh, so you're going to get a very decent performance. But you can't, can't quite match, I don't think, the uh, quality that you're going to get with the uh, Samsung HTC and LG uh, arrangements here. So. Overall, you know, if you're looking uh, at it from uh, you know rational perspective, I think Sony uh, definitely has some work to do. I think to keep up with uh, Samsung in terms of the lower light scenario. But last time when I did this video, some people were saying they preferred the Sony uh, shots in terms of low light. So I guess you know again it's open to interpretation. But uh, in my own opinion, I think that uh, Sony could do better considering you know they're using the most up-to-date uh, sensor. I think the sensor in the S8 is the 300 series actually, not the 200 series like I said before, but uh, you can see you know, that combination of optical image stabilization and software processing uh, it makes for much uh, like brighter here and uh, livelier images when you zoom in. And that's the main thing that I notice uh, really. So, you know, it's a good shooter here on the Sony, uh, but it's not living up to its full potential if you ask me uh, compared to what it could be. So that's uh, basically what I have found here. Uh, in terms of the selfie uh, shooter, it's I think 13 megapixel, and you know we'll get the job done. But I do think that this, the Samsung is a little bit brighter here. You can see with this random shot; it's giving you a little bit more uh, detail from the picture of what it is. Uh, where it's a little bit dark here on the Sony, uh, so you know it's uh, very. Uh, it's not like a broken record. You know, every every year I say the same thing that. Uh, Sony's not living up to its potential when it could do, uh, but you know I think most people will be happy with it overall, uh, particularly in terms of the you know uh, daylight shooting. Uh, the, the super slow motion feature I've already you know checked out. It's a pretty cool uh, feature here. I don't think many people are going to use it day to day unless uh, you know you are using it for sports events etc. Because as I said, you don't have the full quality like the 4K uh, resolution, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but you know, in terms of the you know just normal kind of uh, video shooting, I have found that uh, it's up there with the best, pretty much. I think it could work on the uh, zooming a little bit more to make it a little bit smoother. But I think that ties in again with the lack of optical image stabilization. Uh, so yeah, you know, quite a similar story here to before with the XC Premium. But I did want to give it a dedicated video, you know, for those who think of buying it. I still would recommend it as a phone. It's still fantastic and, you know, it still comes in a lot cheaper than, uh, you know, your iPhone or your S8 Plus, etc. Uh, but I think for the next one, the XC1 or whatever they're talking about, uh, you know, they definitely need to look at putting optical image stabilization in, uh, as well as, you know, working on the software processing. Maybe get uh, the XO Mark or whoever to come down and help them to sort it out, like OnePlus. So, yeah, just a quick little video here. Hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.